my life I've been a farmhand, paper boy, a dishwasher, a fry cook, taught college culinary arts, driven a tow truck for six months. I'm a certified executive chef. Now I'm Murray Long, I'm a professional ice sculptor with wicked good ice. Some people say an ice carver and an ice sculptor are two different things. An ice carver has a shop and an ice sculptor has a studio. So this is my studio. People ask, how'd you get in the business? I said, you just gotta be crazy enough to pick up a power tool, plug it in, and stand in a puddle. We've got all different segments. We've got the logistics section, the design section, the drawing board. We have the ice production area where we have our four ice makers. We have a delivery door in the back, and we have a freezer about the size of a medium New York apartment. In order to make the ice, we have Feinbell CB300 block makers. It starts with 40 gallons of water on each side. It freezes from the bottom up. We vacuum off the water that's on the top. Each block maker makes two 300 pounds blocks of ice. Spin it around and uh, you can just sort of see the, see the beauty in that puppy. That's wicked good ice there, Dia. Wicked good ice. You can see right through it. One of the common questions when people find out you're an ice sculptor is, do you use chainsaws? And we say, absolutely, yes, we use chainsaws. But we use traditional chisels. There's many, 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 many specialty tools. The Roscoe is for lettering. Super Burr for smoothing and shaping. This right here, being the super shaper, this can almost replace a chainsaw. When you carve ice, it's fun. It's playing with power tools. It's creating snow. It's you and the ice. You know, a lot of times it's a solitary thing. You're creating something, you get in the zone, you make a new design. It's fun. Sometimes, yeah, you have to step back about six feet, take a look at it for six seconds. When you're up close, you have a tendency to just be engrossed in the close up. It's getting there. It's getting there. But you have to be able to see the swan inside the ice. Some people can't visualize. Doesn't mean they can't carve. Just use different techniques. I'm brushing the snow off a little bit, and then I'm gonna glaze the ice a little bit with the torch. You sort of seal the ice coating, and then just follow the drips. And there also comes a point in every sculpture when you have to say, stop messing with it, you're gonna break something. And uh, you declare it to be done. When you show up the ice, you get to bring the party. We say you bring the wow factor. It's kind of a cliche. People always say, wow, that's cool. But we really never get tired of hearing that. Everyone always asks, is it going to melt? Absolutely. That's what it's supposed to do. It evolves. And we don't name it till it's done. Could you start with a swan, turns into a duck, it turns into a frog, turns into cocktail ice. It's an interesting environment to work in. I get to shovel snow every day. A lot of people aren't as lucky. What we create are modern ice sculptures. It's not your grandmother's wedding swan. It's beauty and it's functionality. They add an interaction to the experience. People might not remember the flowers at a party or the dessert, but they'll always say, wow, you wouldn't believe this ice sculpture.